What's up guys? It's been a while. I'm back today. Got the hat on. Got a good video for you guys. You may already know that there is another YouTuber out there who does go to Yale. His name is Shaman Med Bros. He and I have been wanting to collab for a while and we finally made it happen. So this video is actually a collaboration between me and Shaman Med Bros. Go and check out his channel. It's linked below. This video, I actually just go ahead and ask him some fun questions, some med school related questions, and also some personal questions about his personality just so we can get to know each other. We actually hang out a lot. We're great friends and there are definitely going to be more videos to come. Without further ado, I present to you a Q&A with Medbros himself. <laughs> Who's this guy? <laughs> hey, I'm Shaman. Uh, I also have a YouTube channel. It's Med Bros. Yeah, exactly. And uh, we both go to the same medical school together. For the longest time, I've been getting a lot of like collab comments, and we've been working on it because med school's crazy. But we're finally doing it. Like your audience doesn't know about me, my audience doesn't know about you. So yeah, that's exactly. also like a good way to get to know each other. I broke these down into two categories. The first category is like general, like general life questions about who you are as a person and what you value. And the second category is obviously as med students, there's a lot of stuff that um, people will ask related to medicine. So I figured we'll like alternate so between the two, okay? And so I guess the first question to you question is, uh, let's see, if you could turn any um, activity into an Olympic sport, what would you have a good chance at winning a medal for? I don't have these interview questions. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Interview right here. I don't know how I'm back in interview mode. Oh no. Figuring out the least amount of work I can do for anything I do. <laughs> I would totally win that. Lectures if I don't have to go to them or watch things two times speed. Maximizing like efficiency. I think I would win that. Damn, that's pretty good. Let's what see. about you? I would probably be like not sleeping. I don't sleep very much. <laughs> I know. It's weird. He texts me at like four in the morning, and then he'll be up at like eight. And I'm like, how is that possible? I have this theory where like the more you sleep, the more tired you are. And that is true. So I, like, I sleep a lot. I'm tired all the time. Because <laughs> like over break, I sleep a lot because I have no inhibition. So I'll sleep like 12, 14 hours a day, and then I'll wake up and I'm like. I'm still so tired. Whereas when I sleep during school, I wake up and I'm like always on edge because my body thinks that there's something to do all the time because I didn't sleep very much. That's just my personal theory, but I don't know. I think I'm I more actually think that, that I actually think that you might be right. Yeah, because like, I've been sleeping more than ever before, but I also feel lazy as hell. Yeah, like it's so weird. I think you're right because it's like I think your body is more prone to thinking it can just take a break whenever it wants because you sleep like a decent amount, and then your body's like, oh, like. Cool, when I'm tired, I can just sleep. Whereas, like, because I've, like, made my body stay up, which is not healthy, by the way, I don't <laughs> condone this at all, my body's just like, oh, I can't sleep whenever I want. So it's just consistently on edge throughout the day. So, uh, what do you think that other people think is weird about you? Other people think it's weird. So, about what, like, what do you think other people think is weird about you? Not, like, what actually other people think is weird about you. <laughs> okay. And why don't you answer this one first? Okay, I don't, that's know, how to, I don't I, know how to answer this. I think, I personally think I come across as a very unconventional person because it's like, I think I'm really into science and I'm like really knowledgeable about it, but I'm also like very, I dumb it down a lot to the extent where people are like, is, does this guy really know what he's talking about? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> cause you like have this stereotypical image of like this person who like knows science and understands science and is like a professor or someone who like really get, knows their stuff. And then I come along and I'm like, I just think it's like, I, I tend to oversimplify and like use terminology that isn't always used. So I think that like people think that's weird about me because they're like, this guy seems like he doesn't know what he's talking about. But really I do, you know? It's, I think that's, that's weird for me. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I think it's not that you're out of place. Like, I think too many people try to overcomplicate or use, like, too complicated words. It's like, let's just dumb it. Like, there's no need to be complicated. Let's just use simple words. Let's explain it simply. Oh that, that's the right way. <laughs> I learned that, like, the other word the other day in the hospital, the word epistaxis literally means nosebleed. 
Like, oh, yeah, why yeah, would yeah, you yeah. not just say nose breathing? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's so weird. <laughs> There's all these like medical terms that mean like really complicated things that are actually yeah, really simple. Like, yeah, like a bloody cough is like hemoptysis. Hemoptysis. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's like why? Because yeah. every time I'm learning something, I always have like extra tab, like five extra tabs of like <laughs> looking up. Mean? Yeah, like what does this mean? <laughs> why not just say you have diarrhea? Yeah. <laughs> like they're the weirdest words for everything. Oh man. I don't know. What do you find weird about me? I'd say you're an introverted extrovert. In a sense, because I think the thing about you that's slightly odd was like, I thought you were a quiet person, and then I, I like yeah, talk I, to you, and you're like not actually a quiet person. Yeah, I'm a mix. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm definitely. It's honestly, I think the reason that I'm quiet in so many situations is again, I'm just lazy as hell. <laughs> <laughs> Like the minimum amount of talking I <laughs> exactly. need. Exactly. I get my point like, across. Okay, I feel I know the answer, but I don't feel like raising my hand. <laughs> I'm that lazy. <laughs> so that's based. That's kind of. I think you're right. That's understandable. I, yeah, I'm actually kind of quiet, except when I'm active. This one I get a lot, and I'm sure you get this a lot. How much and how do you study for medical school specifically? So how much? I think I probably study more hours than most people. Um, so like maybe. If I'm sleeping for like around 10-ish hours, I'm usually studying for like at least half of the time I'm awake. At least. That's so pretty like, That's a, little, yeah, that's hours a lot. At least, yeah. And then how do I study? Um, I basically just sit in front of a desk and look at as much stuff as I can over and over again. I study. I, I can't quantify it. I think I just study until... I have to sleep because my body's like, you need to sleep now. Yeah, that's actually a good point. <laughs> yeah. I actually feel the same way. So I'm not even sure about my hours. How do I study? I, I, I use flashcards a lot. Um, what else do I do? I listen to lectures. It's actually like just different avenues of communicating knowledge really help. That's studying for y'all. This is another question I got from a YouTube channel. Like, it says, one question I had was whether or not students at highly ranked medical schools like Yale mostly come from selective undergraduate universities. I am currently a high school senior. Okay, this guy's a man. Whoever you are, <laughs> you're yeah, way ahead. Yeah, yeah. Way ahead. Fantastic <laughs> that you're doing this, but you're way ahead. Uh, finalizing college apps would like to stay close to home, but that would mean going to, that would mean not going to a highly selective university. Basically, it does where you go to undergrad influence where you go to medical school. So you're gonna I, take, yeah. you give so your we might, Yeah, we might even have different opinions, yeah. but I would actually say, yeah, it does. Cause like from our school, a lot of the people, um, like just looking at where they come from, they come from really good uh, universities. The medical school applications, looking at the name of the college you went to is important, but there's also like things that you wouldn't think about, like the amount of opportunities available at yes. like a different college. You might have more opportunities and better opportunities than um, a smaller or lesser known call it so it's not just the name it's also you're given a, you're thrown a lot more things and uh, I think people are more willing to help you at the top colleges so two things to point out here first of all selection bias you need to know what that means second of all you need to look at this critically you will never know about the people like think about it this way right like every school is like look at all these famous people that went to our school mm -hmm. that's selection bias because you're only gonna see the famous people everyone who didn't succeed you're not gonna see right <laughs> So that's, that's what I want to point out because you'll always see like, I think over 65% of our classes from Ivy Leagues, which is like, oh, that means if you go to an Ivy League, you're more likely to go to another Ivy League. False. Because you don't see all the people from Ivy Leagues who did not go to an Ivy League. Exactly. You only see the ones that did and just because they comprise a large majority of our class doesn't mean that going to a better school necessarily go, means go, like you'll end up at a better place. That's one thing to point out. Second point thing to point out is I agree with him that yes, I do think that the tier of undergrad university you go to does increase your chances of going to a better medical school, but not because of the name. The reason why it matters for you is because of the opportunities, as you mentioned. Like, having gone to Yale, I can say that I go to talks all the time where really famous people come, and I'm like, it's a privilege because I go to the institution where people like this do come. Two days ago, I went and I saw a talk by like the guy who founded P53, the cancer protein. Like a month ago, I was at a talk by Robert Langer, who's like pretty much the founder of biomedical engineering. There's so many famous people that come here, and that's primarily because this has the resources and network to bring those people in, and I can benefit from them. And like not even just the talks, like even in our emails, like we get piles of opportunities like just thrown at us every email. Like, oh, yeah. here's a list of five things you can do. Here's a list of five different opportunities. Yeah. So yeah, there's talks, there's so many different things that like Ivy Leagues hook you up with. The school you go to does matter, like it is a factor, but the like how driven you are and yourself is the most important factor. What is your 
learning philosophy? What is your motivation to study in medicine? Because I think we both feel this right now. There's so much stuff. Mm -hmm. There's so much stuff that if you're not motivated to learn all of it, it's very easy to be like, why am I here? Yeah. So what is your motivation? What keeps you going? Yeah, actually, I think about this a lot. So the way I approach it whenever I'm feeling tired is to just think, okay, why am I doing this? I want to be the best doctor I can be. I want to have the knowledge that, honestly, I think a lot of doctors lack. Um, like, they just go by the book. They don't really know the nitty gritty. And I want to be the doctor that knows that. For me, I think that motivation comes from just appreciating the, the, the lack of... I mean, no, the depth of the stuff you're learning. And that's like something that I think very few people have. Like you need to, I think this starts at a very early age when you start appreciating like just how magnificent the world is and how much craziness we understand today that we didn't understand before. And it's exactly. a privilege exactly. to actually it's, know this stuff. Like it is yeah. a privilege. Cause like the P53 talk that I went to, P53 is a protein that's mutated in pretty much majority of cancers, a very big protein. But it took 30 years to like discover just that protein. And so for us to just memorize it and take it for granted is kind of like, it's, it's very much like belittling the amount of work it took to get there and it's belittling the amount of knowledge we have at our exposure today. So I personally just think it's very important to soak in all this knowledge because we are at the brink of scientific, like we as us right now are at the brink of scientific innovation. We, we are given the opportunity to know as much as there is to possibly know about everything there is in science. Like think about how fascinating it is, right? You learn so many things that are in our body that are, you're just like, wow, like we're learning about the immune system right now. Like your innate immune system that's working in your body at all times, even without a brain, because each cell doesn't necessarily have a brain, is able to do things that you would not even think about. It recognizes things, it fights off things, when you're not even like thinking about any of those things. And I think that's like recognizing that and seeing like, wow, this is brilliant. Like I would not have known how this worked, but nature has worked 13 billion years to make it happen. And I think realizing that and thinking how fast, thinking about how fascinating that is instead of how much there is to memorize is gonna go a long way. Cause now when I'm up really late, you guys see my Snapchats, I'm up all the time just listening to Bollywood. This is how I was <laughs> listen to Bollywood, a ton of Bollywood, and then I'm, I'm like watching lectures and I study for, I'd say a really long time. But I can do that because I find this stuff fascinating. I think it's really cool, really intriguing how the body has worked to solve very complex problems. I think the only thing that like sometimes comes to odds with that is like the way you're sometimes taught it. Like you are sometimes just taught all the details. like. You need to learn about IL-4, IL-6, like all these little molecules. <laughs> and it might not, you might not have the time to like take a step back and appreciate like yeah. the immune system, like you were saying, and mm -hmm. how complex it is. All right, well, Great. this is Shaman, Med Bros. Check out his channel, it's gonna be linked below. Overall, thanks you guys for watching. Sorry for not posting anything for a while. School is hard. School is hard. Yeah, <laughs> it's getting really hard. But, but we yeah. have Christmas break now, so and we might there might be more. some break to get some st some extra stuff. In. Yeah, exactly. But I'll see you guys in the next video. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. And uh, like, comment, share, and subscribe to his channel too. And uh, yeah, see you guys in the next video. See ya.